What's up everyone, Steven here with TechMaker. In this video, we're gonna continue with our smart contract that we started in the last episode, and we're gonna go ahead and deploy it to the testnet, the RinkB Ethereum testnet to be specific. It's what we were gonna do in the last video, but it took us a little bit longer to get going than I had thought, so that's what we're gonna do now, and uh, let's see how it goes. If you didn't catch part one, uh, I'll link to it down in the description. So jump down there and check that out first, probably unless you're really already familiar with ERC20 tokens and Open Zeppelin and all this stuff. Um, and you can just spin up your own. Also, I didn't realize when I made this token that that's actually the name of a company, but whatever, we'll stick with it. It's fine. Um, I was just trying to make a goofy token name. So anyway... Uh, no worries. So what we need to do to actually deploy this onto uh, RinkB, we really we need several different things. So if I go back over to my Chrome browser for a second. So the first thing you'll need is MetaMask. So as we interact with the chain, we're not actually going to use MetaMask really that much other than just kind of verifying a few things um, in terms of our code but we need it in order to get some fake tokens. So all of these these test networks, like RinkB, uh, they have what's called a faucet. And basically what it is, it's a way for you to get free Ethereum or like Chainlink or whatever on the, on the particular test net so that you can actually run transactions because they don't want you to have to pay, obviously, for fake tokens that are just going to go away eventually or whatever. So... Um, what we can do is come over here to this faucet.rinkb thing. Um, and I've got my TechMaker test account set up. So we are going to look at private keys and stuff. So I was careful to set up a, a, an account that is just a test account. So, you know, don't think you're being clever and trying to like steal something from me because there's nothing real here. Um, but anyway, so what we've got to do to get... Uh, basically money on this RinkB testnet. So we've got to go over to Twitter or somewhere and tweet out something with the address in it. And then we have to drop that link to the tweet here. Then we can delete the tweet. So let me jump over to my Twitter. I'll make a quick tweet and show you how to do it. Okay, so I popped over into my Twitter. And what we need to do is what? To request funds, make a tweet with your Ethereum address. So I'm going to copy my Ethereum address for TechMaker test here. And what I'm going to do is come over here and say uh, this is our, like a uh, rink B test and just paste this here. We'll tweet it. And I'm going to click on it, copy the URL, paste this here and say give me Ether. And I'm going to go ahead and so basically what this is doing is setting a limit so like I'm going to go ahead and just get the max because I'm not going to do this again for a while. So I'm going to get, uh, so basically you can see it's pulling back my Twitter profile with that address there, which is great. And so I'm just going to go back and delete this because I don't really want anybody to uh, see that. It's not important. So, okay. And then um, now it says funded. So let's come over here and check out the account. So now this account has 18.75 ETH, which is really great. And um, let's see here. The other thing I want to do while I'm here is actually create another account because we're going to need it. Uh, so we'll do tech maker testing two. Uh, so we don't, we're not going to put anything in there, but we're going to need the keys from each of those accounts probably here in just a minute. Um, okay, cool. So that's kind of the first part. The next part is we need to set up an account with Infura. Okay, so let's go over to Infura. I think it's Infura.io. And basically what this is, is it's a, um, it's a endpoint for an RPC, or it's an RPC endpoint, rather, uh, that we can use to talk to the Ethereum blockchain and all the various test nets and all this kind of stuff. So um, so what I'm going to do is actually create a Steven plus test at techmaker.tv. And uh, I'll just set up a quick password here. It doesn't matter too much what it is. Um,
Okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and sign up and click everything that is a boat. That's a boat. That's kind of a boat. Let's see. <laughs> Love training uh, Google's AI. Anyway, so um, let me go verify my account and my email address and then we'll come back here. Okay, so now that I've set this up, and the reason I'm setting all this up fresh is because I actually want to be able to show like all the API keys and stuff without worrying about blurring everything out. Just don't use my stuff. It's better just to set up your account. Um, at some point, like I'm not going to use this account for real and they'll probably like rate limit it or something. So just set up your own account. It's free. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, so over here, we're going to click on Ethereum. I'm going to click create a project and we're going to call this like tech maker demo create and what this is going to do. So I don't want to be on the main net. I want to be on rink B. So what I'm going to do is just basically copy this URL. So um, let's copy the V3 right there. And now what we need to do, so now we have everything that we need in order to actually talk to the uh, rink B test net via uh, Truffle. So if you come back over here to Visual Studio and I open up the um, Truffle config, I see it right there. So if you scroll through here, there's a lot of interesting stuff. So there's a Ropsten. Ropsten is another test net. So I'm just going to uncomment Ropsten for now. And we'll tab that in. Um, and I'm going to change this, first of all, to be rink B. And then right here, you see we have this um, HD wallet provider thing. I'm gonna just going to paste this in. We're going to have to um, do some other stuff here in a second. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and paste that. So by default, uh, this HD wallet provider isn't included. And uh, we're going to fix the fact like we don't have this mnemonic thing set up either. Um, but what I'm going to do is go up to the very top of this file. And the first thing I'm going to do is say const HD wallet provider equals, and then we'll require, and it's going to be at truffle. So it's, it used to be its own project, but now it's actually built into truffle if I understand correctly, um, HD wallet provider like that. Okay. So then the next thing we want to do is actually, so you know how I was saying in the last episode, whenever you fire up truffle, it's essentially behind the scenes, um, setting up those 10 accounts for you. And what's happening with that is those are 10 unlocked wallets that truffle can use to sort of transact when it's running tests and so on. Um, when you're talking to a test net like Rinkby or something, it can't really do that. Um, the reason it can do it on your computer is because everything's just running on your computer. There's more control. I'm oversimplifying this, but essentially like, uh, it's not going to set up and fund all of these accounts for you on the test net. So what we did just now by going to the faucet is we sort of self funded a Rinkby account. And, uh, and then I set up another address. So we're going to get both of those private keys and we're going to use those to initialize, uh, our wallets that we need. Um, so let me go ahead and go back over to the browser and what I'm going to do, first of all, so what we're going to have is like at the top level, so we're going to have const private keys equals array. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to go to MetaMask. And let me switch to testing here and we'll go to account details, export private key. And you will have to have your real password here. If I can remember what mine is. Maybe confirm. Yeah. Okay. So there's my private key for this test account. And again, like one thing when you're doing development on Ethereum stuff, like I actually have, this may seem ridiculous, but I have two different laptops and one of them that I do testing and stuff on. And then one that's like got my real info on it. So like this one, I don't have any real money on this computer at all. And that's on purpose because I, I don't want to get anything. Like I don't want to accidentally be on the main net 
and run something or, or send something somewhere that I'm not trying to. Um, so that's that would be an expensive mistake. So anyway, so let's switch over to TechMaker testing here. And uh, let's go to account details, export private key. Okay, and this one, I like all the warnings and then I'm just like actually recording myself and I'm gonna put this on the internet, so that's kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, all the disclosures are there, so you know, um, that's all not real stuff. So anyway, let's get this set up now. So if I come down here, so the HD wallet provider thing looks a little bit different now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just enter that down. Um, so, and we'll actually just ax that in a second. So what I'm gonna do is say private keys is uh, private keys. And then we'll add a provider, how does that go? Provider or URL. And then it's gonna be our string from here. And then we'll say number of addresses two, like that. And we'll see how this goes. Now the next thing is for rink B, the network ID is four. And um, I think the rest of this looks fine. Okay, cool. So let's see. Um, just double checking everything. So I think at this point, we should be able to actually run this dude. So let's go back over to our, our terminal. If we run truffle test, it should just all execute just fine. Um, no, cannot find module. Okay, so npm install at truffle slash HD wallet provider. Let's see, maybe it's not actually included, but by default. Um, so it looks like it's found it and it's adding everything. So we'll give this just a second to run. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video in case this takes like five minutes. Okay, cool. So uh, I think that's in there now. Let's try to do truffle test again. And uh, everything should be just fine in theory now. Okay, cool. Seems like it's compiling, good to go. Okay, great. So now the trick for actually running this on rink B is pretty straightforward. It's truffle test rink B. And the reason we set up that second account and the reason we included both, wait, hold on a second, that ain't right. We wanna say network rink B, excuse me. So truffle test network rink B. So this is gonna take longer, and I may pause the video, but let's just make sure that it kind of keeps going. Um, so it's first the first thing it's gonna do is use that deployer script to actually deploy all these contracts. So what we're gonna see printed out at the end of this, if everything goes according to plan, is it's actually going to deploy our token to Rink B, it's gonna, which is gonna cost us Ether from the address that I set up with Ether. It's going to transfer, a th or it's gonna give that user, that first address, one million Zazzle, and then it's gonna transfer a thousand uh, Zazzle to that second address. So we'll see how it all plays out, but I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for just a second. This will take a little while because it's actually executing on the test net, not on my computer. Um, looks like it successfully compiled. I wish there was more output here so we could watch it, but you just kind of got to wait. Um, so I'm going to pause and this may take a couple of minutes. Okay, cool. So it completed and it looks like our test passed. Um, I was hoping to get a little bit more output here. Um, I guess we could actually go ahead and program that into the test. Um, I think if we do truffle deploy, so so you normally wouldn't like deploy like this, and this is something I want to clarify. 
I'm not necessarily saying that this is necess- like this is the right way to test because I'm actually running kind of what's computationally an expensive test. Like this makes more sense to test locally. Um, but what's happening is that the test actually goes ahead and because we're specifying this network, it goes ahead and deploys to rank B and then executes all the same transactions and so on. Uh, one thing we can do really fast is just spot check this and look at our account balance for that test one here. And you can see that we've actually spent a little bit of gas. You know what, maybe I don't need to, um, let me go to this address um, in RinkB, uh, what would it be, Etherscan? Yeah, so I like to, you know, if you're following along with this and you haven't watched much of this channel, like this channel is a little bit different than a lot. Like I really like to kind of uh, do a little bit more exploration. So let's just look through here. Uh, so we got our 18.75 Ether. Um, we did a contract creation here. What does this do? Well, you know what? It may... Huh. So we have this Zazzle. Let's sec let's check on this Zazzle contract address here and let's uh add this to our assets, add token. So you can see here we have ZAZL showing up and you can see that I have uh 990,000 999,000. So it transferred a thousand to let's come over to TechMaker Testing 2, add token, next, and I have a thousand Zazzle. Okay, cool. So what I was gonna say, and I'm kind of rambling a little bit here, but we verified everything worked. What I was going to say is when we run this test, this Zazzle test, now that we know that we're not going to actually see some output from the test, what we could do is, like right here, we could say console.log uh, Zazzle address, and then put like Zazzle.address right there or something like that. But what I was gonna say is, I don't want to rerun these tests over and over and over again because every single time, um, if I run it on that network, uh, I'm actually spending that fake ether and I'm generating all these contracts on RinkB. Now that's fine, like it's a test network, it's made for testing, but just it takes a long time and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't want to run that unless I've made significant changes on local host, basically on my computer, and now I want to see how it works on the test net. So why are we going to all this trouble? So first of all, the other thing to, to note is we can we can deploy it, like the regular way to deploy is if we wanted to just deploy the contracts and not actually execute all the tests, we could just say truffle deploy network rink B. And that would have the same effect. Um, it's gonna run that deploy script, which gives the creator a million tokens um, without running all the other stuff. So that that's one thing I wanted to note. The reason I wanted to go all the way up to this point is because one of the things I want to do is is in the next video, I'm going to do a chain link tutorial where we actually interact with the VRF contract, the uh, verifiable random number contract. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. Chain link VRF. Yeah, so what I want to do is bring back a verifiable random number from Chainlink in this contract. And that's tricky to do if you're just working on localhost because what you need to do is interact with the real Chainlink contracts that are deployed somewhere. And like, for example, there are Chainlink contracts that are deployed on the RinkB network. And so in my mind, what we can actually do if we wanna do this in sort of a test-driven way is we can write our tests, uh, and then write our contract and then just test against RinkB. The alternative to that, which is a lot more uh, time consuming, I would say, is to actually fork 
the entire Rinkby test network with the existing contracts on it into your local computer. But I don't really want to do that. I'm working on sort of a lightweight MacBook Pro, and I don't I don't really want to like bring all this stuff on here. So I'm just gonna do the like, the way that I've shown today. So anyway, this is kind of an interesting way to go about things. Um, hopefully, this is informative and uh, interesting. So yeah, like I said, in the next video, we're gonna. I'm, I'm actually. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. I'm going to make this kind of a funny token, almost like something you could use in a game where we're going to get a verifiable random number back from Chainlink, and then we're going to send a certain amount of tokens based on whatever that random number is. So like whenever you go to send Zazzle to somebody, it's not going to send like the amount you specify. It's going to send like a random amount. <laughs> and I think that's kind of funny. Um, so uh, we'll see, but that'll be kind of interesting. And um yeah, but I think that's it for this episode, um, and I'll talk to you in the next one.